Here is a list of top 20 battles when smaller armies were able to defeat much larger forces, against all odds. I chose battles where the numerical disadvantage was at least 2 to 1. If you know about other battles, which I forgot to mention here, please post them in the comments. Number 20. The Battle of Gaugamela in 331 BC. The Battle of Gaugamela was a decisive battle of Alexander the Great's invasion of the Persian Achaemenid Empire. In 331 BC, Alexander's army of the Hellenic League met the Persian army of Darius III near Gaugamela close to the modern city of Dahak in Iraqi Kurdistan. Even though heavily outnumbered, Alexander emerged victorious due to his army's superior tactics and his deft employment of light infantry. It was a decisive victory for the Hellenic League and led to the fall of the Achaemenid Empire. Number 19. The Battle of Guandu in 200 AD. The Battle of Guandu was fought between the warlords Cao Cao and Yuan Shao in 200 AD in the late Eastern Han Dynasty. The battle, which concluded with a decisive victory for Cao Cao, was a turning point in the war between the two warlords. It marked the beginning of Cao Cao's gradual reunification of northern China, which made possible the establishment of the state of Cao Wei in the Three Kingdoms period. Number 18. The Fall of Singapore in February 1942. The Battle of Singapore, also known as the Fall of Singapore, was fought in the Southeast Asian theater of the Second World War, when the Empire of Japan invaded the British stronghold of Singapore, nicknamed the Gibraltar of the East. Singapore was the major British military base in Southeast Asia and was the keystone of British imperial interwar defense planning for Southeast Asia, as well as the Southwest Pacific. The fighting in Singapore lasted from 8 to the 15th of February 1942 although this was preceded by two months of British resistance as Japanese forces advanced down the Malaya Peninsula. It resulted in the Japanese capture of Singapore and the largest surrender of British-led military personnel in history. About 80,000 British, Indian and Australian troops became prisoners of war, joining 50,000 taken by the Japanese in the earlier Malayan campaign. The British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, called it the worst disaster in British military history. Number 17. The Battle of Kalka River in May 1223. The Battle of the Kalka River was fought between the Mongol Empire, whose armies were led by Jebe and Subutai the Valiant, and the coalition of several Rus principalities, including Kiev and Galic, and the Cumans. They were under the joint command of Mstislav the Bold and Mstislav III of Kiev. The battle was fought on May 31, 1233, on the banks of the Kalka River in present-day Donetsk Oblast, Ukraine, and ended in a Mongol victory. The Mongol army obliterated the allied Kievan rus cuman army at the river crossing. The Mongols drew the russo cuman force out until they were overextended then attacked them with their heavy cavalry and destroyed the Allied forces. The Mongols captured several Russian princes and ritually executed them by crushing them beneath a feasting table, on which the Mongol leaders dance and feast. Number 16. The Battle of Narva in November 1700. The Battle of Narva on the 30th of November 1700 was an early battle in the Great Northern War. A Swedish relief army under Charles XII of Sweden defeated the Russian siege force three to four times its size led by Charles Eugène Ducra. A blizzard against the Russian side allowed the Swedish army to win. Narva was not followed by further advances of the Swedish army into Russia. Tsar Peter the Great of Russia took Narva in a second battle in 1704. Number 15. The Siege of Alesia in 52 BC. The Battle of Alesia, or Siege of Alesia, was a military engagement in the Gallic Wars that took place in September 52 BC, around the Gallic fortified settlement of Alesia, a major center of the Mandubi tribe. Gaius Julius Caesar, leading roughly 50,000 Roman soldiers, laid siege to a rebel Gaul army consisting of roughly 85,000 infantrymen and 15,000 cavalry led under Vercingetorix in the fortress of Alesia. 
The Belgi tribe attempted to relieve the siege with an army of 260,000 warriors. The Romans, through the personal leadership of Titus Labienus, brought a terrific slaughter upon the Belgi. This demoralizing event led to the defenders of Alesia to yield, ending Vercingetorix's rebellion. Number 14. The Six-Day War in 1967 The Six-Day War was fought between June 5th and 10th, 1967, by Israel and the neighboring states of Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Iraq and Lebanon. In reaction to the mobilization of Egyptian forces along the Israeli border in the Sinai Peninsula, Israel launched a series of preemptive airstrikes against Egyptian airfields. Simultaneously, the Israelis launched a ground offensive into the Gaza Strip and the Sinai, which again caught the Egyptians by surprise. Egyptian leader Jamal Abdul Nasser induced Syria and Jordan to begin attacks on Israel by using the initially confused situation to claim that Egypt had defeated the Israeli airstrike. Israeli counterattacks resulted in the seizure of East Jerusalem as well as the West Bank from the Jordanians, while Israel's retaliation against Syria resulted in its occupation of the Golan Heights. Arab casualties were far heavier than those of Israel. Israeli morale and international prestige was greatly increased by the outcome of the war, and the area under Israeli control tripled. Number 13. The Battle of Julu in 207 BC The Battle of Julu was fought in Julu in present-day Xingtai, Hebei, China, in 207 BC, primarily between forces of the Qin dynasty and the insurgent state of Chu. The Qin commander was Zhang Han, while the Chu leader was Xiang Hu. The battle concluded with a decisive victory for the rebels over the larger Qin army. The battle marked the decline of Qin military power as the bulk of Qin's armies was destroyed in this battle. Number 12. The Battle of Karhe in 53 BC The Battle of Karhe was fought in 53 BC between the Roman Republic and the Parthian Empire near the town of Karhe, a small town in modern-day Turkey. The Parthian general Surena decisively defeated a numerically superior Roman invasion force under the command of Marcus Licinius Crassus. Crassus, a member of the First Triumvirate and the wealthiest man in Rome, had been enticed by the prospect of military glory and riches and decided to invade Parthia without the official consent of the Senate. Crassus marched his army directly through the deserts of Mesopotamia. His army clashed with Sorena's force near Carhe. Despite being heavily outnumbered, Surena's cavalry completely outmaneuvered the Roman heavy infantry, killing or capturing most of the Roman soldiers. Crassus himself was killed when truce negotiations turned violent. It is commonly seen as one of the earliest and most important battles between the Roman and the Parthian empires, and one of the most crushing defeats in Roman history. Number 11 the Battle of Watling Street in 60 or 61 AD. The Battle of Watling Street took place in Roman-occupied Britain in 60 or 61 AD, between an alliance of indigenous British peoples led by Boudica and the Roman army led by Gaius Suetonius Paulinus. Although heavily outnumbered, the Romans decisively defeated the allied tribes, inflicting heavy losses on them. There was a rumor of 80,000 Britons left dead on the battlefield, while around 400 Romans were dead, according to Tacitus. The battle marked the end of resistance to Roman rule in Britain, in the southern half of the island, a period that lasted until 410 AD. Number 10. The Battle of Carnal in February 1739. The Battle of Carnal, February 24, 1739, was a decisive victory for Nader, the Shah of Iran, during his invasion of Mughal India. Nader's forces defeated the army of Muhammad Shah within three hours, despite being heavily outnumbered 6 to 1, paving the way for the Persian sack of Delhi. The engagement is considered the crowning jewel in Nader's military career, as well as a tactical masterpiece. The battle took place near Karnal. 110 kilometers north of Delhi, India. Number 9. The First Battle of Panipat in April 1526. 
The first battle of Panipat on the 21st of April 1526 was fought between the invading forces of Babur and the Lodi Empire. It took place in North India and marked the beginning of the Mughal Empire. This was one of the earliest battles involving gun-powered firearms and field artillery in India. Babur's guns proved decisive in battle, firstly because Ibrahim Lodi lacked any field artillery, but also because the sound of the cannon frightened Lodi's elephants, causing them to trample Lodi's own men. Number 8. The Siege of Vienna in 1529 The Siege of Vienna in 1529 was the first attempt by the Ottoman Empire led by Suleiman the Magnificent to capture the city of Vienna, Austria. During the long journey from Bulgaria to Vienna, many Turkish large caliber cannons and artillery pieces became hopelessly mired or bogged down, leaving Suleiman no choice but to abandon them, while camels brought from the empire's eastern provinces, unused to the difficult conditions, were lost in large numbers. Sickness and poor health became common among the Janissaries, claiming many lives along the perilous journey. Epic defense and bad weather conditions prevented the city from enemy conquest. The siege signaled the pinnacle of the Ottoman Empire's power and the maximum extent of Ottoman expansion in Central Europe. Number 7. The Battle of Cartagena de Indias in March-May 1741 The Battle of Cartagena de Indias was an amphibious military engagement between the forces of Britain under Vice Admiral Edward Vernon and those of Spain under Admiral Blas de Leto. It took place at the city of Cartagena de Indias in March 1741, in present-day Colombia. The battle was a significant episode of the War of Jenkins' Year and a large-scale naval campaign. This battle saw a huge British amphibious force of 26,400 men and 186 ships, beat back and defeated by 4,000 Spanish troops and just 6 ships. The British pulled back after losing over 8,000 men killed 7,500 wounded, losing 1,500 guns and 50 ships. Number 6. The Battle of Fay River in 383 AD During the Battle of Fay River in 383, Fujian of the former Qin Empire was decisively defeated by the numerically inferior Army of Eastern Qin. The location of the battle, the Fay River, no longer exists but is believed to have flowed through modern Luan and Hui near the Huai River. The battle is considered to be one of the most significant battles in the history of China. The aftermath of the battle includes the former Qin Empire falling into massive civil war and its eventual destruction, ensuring the survival of Eastern Jin and other Chinese regimes south of the Yangtze River. Number 5. The Great Siege of Malta in 1565 the Great Siege of Malta took place in 1565, when the Ottoman Empire tried to invade the island of Malta, then held by the Knights Hospitaller. The Knights with approximately 2,000 foot soldiers and 400 Maltese men, women and children withstood the siege and repelled the invaders. This victory became one of the most celebrated events in 16th century Europe and it undoubtedly contributed to the eventual erosion of the European perception of Ottoman invincibility and marked a new phase in Spanish domination of the Mediterranean. Number 4. The Battle of Tumu in 1449 Battle of Tumu was a frontier conflict between the Mongols and the Chinese Ming Dynasty, which led to the capture of the Zhengtong Emperor on September 1, 1449 and the defeat of an army of 500,000 men by a much smaller force. This battle is regarded as the greatest military debacle of the entire Chinese history. There is a legend that Zheng Tong Emperor had been working as a herder during the capture by Mongols. Number 3. The Battle of Myongyang in October 1597 The Battle of Myongyang on October 26, 1597 was fought between the Korean Joseon Kingdom's navy led by Admiral Yi Sun Sin and the Japanese Navy in the Myongyang Strait, near Jindo Island, off the southwest corner of the Korean Peninsula. With 13 ships remaining from Admiral Won Gyun's disastrous defeat at the Battle of Chilkongyang, Admiral Yi held the strait as a last stand battle against a fleet of 133 Japanese warships 
and at least 200 logistical support ships. Number 2. The Battle of Blood River in December 1838. The Battle of Blood River is the name given for the battle fought between 470 pioneers led by Andreas Pretorius and an estimated 15,000 to 21,000 Zulu attackers on the bank of the Ancom River on the 16th of December 1838 in what is today Kvazulu Natal, South Africa. Casualties amounted to 3,000 of King Dingan's soldiers dead, including two Zulu princes competing with Prince Mepande for the Zulu throne. Three pioneers commando members were lightly wounded, including Pretorius himself. Number 1. The Battle of Cochin in 1504 The Battle of Cochin, sometimes referred as the Second Siege of Cochin, was a series of confrontations between March and July 1504, fought on land and sea, principally between the Portuguese garrison at Cochin, allied to the Trimumpara Raja and the armies of the Zamorin of Calicut and vassal Malabari states. The celebrated heroics of the tiny Portuguese garrison, led by Duarte Pacheco Pereira, fended off an invading army several hundred times bigger. It proved a humiliating defeat for the Zamorin of Calicut. He not only failed to conquer Cochin, but his inability to crush the tiny opposition undermined the fate of his vassals and allies. The Zamorin lost much of his traditional authority over the Malabar states of India in the aftermath. The preservation of Cochin secured the continued presence of the Portuguese in India.